Hello there, and welcome back to the Clear Coats channel. And uh, thank you for coming and studying with me. Today, and in this whole series, we will be covering Cracking the Coding Interview, 189 Programming Questions and Solutions by Gail Lockman McDowell. And I want to preface this whole series by saying this is by no means a substitute. Please go out and buy this book. It is a great book. I have yet to read it, but you will be reading it with me, and I will not be covering this book in its entirety in its 696 pages. Um, <laughs> I don't have enough time for that. You probably don't have enough time. I don't know. But um, I will be covering, I will, this will be like a highlight reel, and I will be using this as like a jumping off point so that we cover each section and I learn it, and hopefully you can learn along with me. I want to address the elephant in the room, which is, this is my book, and I just said I have not read it. I, like many boot camp grads, uh, purchased this book, wide-eyed, gleaming. I'm going to read this, and I'm going to master the coding interview, and it's going to be great. In fact, I asked for it as a gift for my family upon my boot camp graduation. And I haven't read it, because I have a lot of anxiety, in general, but especially when it comes to coding interviews. Um, and I don't think I'm alone in that, but, a t you know, and this is historically, because I'm trying, we're always trying our best and trying to improve as human beings, and so historically, when I have anxiety about something, I tend to avoid it, or in the past. Right now we're facing our demons. <laughs> That's my new thing is that it is Halloween season, right? It is October. If any, if there's any a time to face your demons, it is now. So without further ado, let's crack this baby open and get started. So I want to start by reading some of McDowell's words aloud to you. So let me find my spot. Okay. So we're going to start with the introduction. Okay which starts, Dear Reader. This is story time, so buckle in. Um, she starts by saying, she's not a recruiter, she's a software engineer. And as such, she knows what it's like to be asked to whip up brilliant algorithms on the spot and write full all this code on a whiteboard, right? And she's been asked to do this for many a tech company. And she's also been on the other side of the table. So she's asked candidates to do them herself. And She's been on a committee where she had to debate whether a candidate did well enough to merit the offer. And so again, just to reiterate, she understands like the full circle. And that's where she's coming from in writing this book. And I'll read you directly from her words. I encourage you to read these introductory chapters carefully. They contain important insight that just might make the difference between a higher and a no higher. And that's the forward. If you see a lot of cuts, it's because I'm like flipping through pages or I forgot my lines. You'll never know. Introduction, which is something's wrong. So it starts out with something's wrong, right? And so in this section, she says that her company interviewed 10 candidates and none of them were going to receive an acceptance. They were all going to be rejected. And even one of her candidates was going to be rejected. And she was kind of wondering like, what's going on? And so it kind of culminates to the point of like needing this book. You need to prepare with real interview questions, right? Sure, you can memorize like foobar, printing that out, and just, you know, rote memory. Just you have like whatever you've seen on, um, yeah, just rote memory, whatever you've seen on leak code, for example. But at the same time, you need to learn real problems and their patterns. And you need to be able to see this so that you can take in like fresh algorithms. So this is really just all about problem solving and being able to adapt and change and also have the correct behavioral skills. Like there are just so many components that go into the interview process that I think are often overlooked. And that's what this book is trying to address. So let's move on to part one, the interview process. So most tech top tech companies and tech companies in general, you know, what this book is all about, give you algorithm and coding problems. 
And that's the biggest part of their interview process. And your interviewer will make an assessment of your performance based on the following, as she states. One, analytical skills. Next, coding skills. Technical logic and computer science fundamentals. Experience and cultural fit slash communication skills. So I think it's really important and um, I'll try to flash those all up on the screen. To take note of these five, yes, correct, five categories. I think sometimes some of them are overlooked, so just to have the full picture before you're, you have an interview is important. I think the overlooming question is why, like why do this? If, you know, as she stated in the introduction, like, some candidates, they're, they have everything going for them. They have the GPA, they obviously have the knowledge, but they just, in that maybe that one interview, don't do well. So why even do this? Some people in general, this just isn't their forte. I even said, I have so much performance anxiety sometimes, right, that this is not always maybe the best way to judge my abilities to code. Uh, it's kind of an artificial environment. Like when in the real world are you coding on a whiteboard, right? And in fact, if this was the real world, couldn't you just look up the answer? Like that's what Stack Overflow is there for, right? And <laughs> I think her other point is that, you know, data structures and binary trees aren't used that often. Um, and if you did have to use it, you could learn it. You wouldn't have to just be put on the spot and know it. So she goes through these kind of whys and then explains, hey, there is some reasoning behind it, right? So false negatives are acceptable. Some good candidates aren't going to make it past. And as the candidate yourself, it's really hard. And I know I've done it before, but as much as you can, like try not to take this personally and know that there's always, you know, a another opportunity out there. Another thing is problem-solving skills are valuable. This I think we can all agree with. Um, and then basic data structure and algorithm knowledge is useful. And I can attest while, you know, some algorithms have not found applicable in my real-world career thus far, the fact that I have seen them uh, and can apply them or through them have learned, like, methods, right? Like array methods, for example that while I'm never going to use in the same way I used in the algorithm, they do come up. And it's great that I have used it in that sense, so I know when, hey, this is definitely applicable in this use case. Yeah, and then she kind of goes through some of the other, you know, things about, like, why whiteboarding is important. Uh, you know, it lets you focus on what matters. And, yeah, I think there's some more valuable information here, like how questions are selected which usually is up to the interviewer. How are you evaluated? I think this differs per company. Sometimes though, there is no grading system, right? So it's really just relative to other candidates. And again, that's something you can't take personally. Okay, the next section is behind the scenes. I will not be addressing this. It kind of covers different tech companies and things very specific to them. So again, please buy the book. Next is the special situation section. This has to do with, you know, if you're experienced, whether you're, go you're trying out for, to work at a startup, like different things like that. I'm not gonna, going to be addressing this section either. Okay, before the interview, right? This is an important section as well. It talks about your resume, your projects, different things such as that. I think the one thing, I, one takeaway I really liked from this section is this like flow chart. And we're going to cover just one part of the flowchart, which is the day of. So what should you do? You have your interview, it's the day of. So first, wake up in plenty of time to eat a good breakfast and be on time. I think that's so important. Like, take care of your physical needs and just get yourself in the best spot. Like, if you need to meditate, go on a walk, like, be, be ready. Be confident, not cocky, like that. Remember to talk loud. Show how you think. No, remember to talk out loud. You, you could talk loud, but that might scare them away. But remember to talk out loud. Show how you think. And then don't forget, stumbling and struggling is normal. I think that this whole, those four th things that she addresses, like, so important to remember. And I will definitely be highlighting them. Maybe even, like, photocopying this, printing it out. 
hanging on my wall. Okay, next section is behavioral questions. I think I'm not gonna go over much of this, but I think something that is important is the interview preparation grid, which is to think about your project and think about different categories, such as what were challenges you faced on it, what were mistakes and failures you also had to overcome, uh, what did you enjoy, maybe what was a leadership role you felt you had on it, and were there conflicts on the project? And then, what would you do differently if you could go back, or what do you plan on adding to it in the future? Okay, so that's been our introduction to Cracking the Coding interview. I hope this was informative, and if not, it's just a good introduction to delve into this great book. And I'm looking forward to next episode where we cover the big O, which I think is really important. And I think we'll be spending a lot of time on this. So I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Stay tuned. <laughs> Bye. Oops. Cut that section.